Hi everyone and welcome to Spring Cleaning the Body. I'm Dr. K and we're going to be talking about how to get ready, how to get your body ready that is, for spring. So what exactly is this? Well, um, it's in with the in with the new essentially. Um, what you want to do is just get ready, get out of that hibernation phase that you were in for winter and and start getting out and about. So who can do this? Well, absolutely anyone, especially if you're the person that makes the meals at home and kind of organizes the crew. This is this is ideal. Um, so why are we talking about this now? Well, I would say that there's no time like the present to start feeling better. Um, spring and fall are the ultimate times to kind of go into that transition, which is what um, we're doing. So going from winter to summer, we're doing that spring transition. So this is a perfect time. How do you do this? Well, as you're doing your spring cleaning, clean out your fridge, clean out the cupboards. I know myself, I did this and I found a can that was expired like three years ago. So clearly I didn't do a good job last year, but this year is different. Uh, make a grocery list without any packaged food. Now this is a big one. So packaged food is considered anything that has a wrapping on it. So it could be bread, it could be chips, it could be muffins, cookies. So your grocery list will be going to be void of any of those things. Um, the biggest thing is planning ahead. So if you have um, an idea of what you'd like to cook for the week, um, definitely going to the grocery store with a plan is ideal. And I'm going to get into healthy snacks a little bit later. So water, this is a big deal. So make this the main source of fluids that you have throughout your day. Um, and basically to get a kickstart on this, if you have a glass by your bed in the morning, drink that and you're well on your way. Um, the other thing is just carrying something with you throughout the day just as a reminder or even some people put reminders on their phone. So the goal that you want with hydration here is pale, clear, yellow urine. That's, that's the goal. If you're, if you're meeting that, then you're probably well on your way to, to good hydration. Now sleep. Sleep is key here. Um, I mean, when you don't get a good night's sleep, you know, your mood is off. You, you get that kind of brain fog, you feel slow, like you're not getting things done the way that you should. Um, so it's a big deal. The other thing is that's kind of neat is melatonin. So this is kind of like linked with sleep, that sleep hormone. Now, melatonin is a bit different because it can be easily thrown off. So for people that are shift workers or um, the people that like to watch TV late at night, so screens actually give off this, this blue hue. So screens, you know, and by that I mean iPhone or phones in general, computers, TVs, they all have this blue hue that they give off. And essentially, um, this messes with melatonin release. So what I suggest for people is that if you're going to be watching TV before bed, stop watching around 8.30, 9 o'clock start dimming all the lights because again lights um, actually do also interfere with melatonin release dim all the lights and just do something quiet you know that could be you know take up a new hobby it could be knitting it could be um, you know reading if it's not too stimulating of course um, or it could be it could be a coloring book they actually have now these adult coloring books which are kind of cool so you can just do that before bed um, but if you don't want to spend the money on the adult coloring books, then just go to the dollar store, pick up some, you know, Mickey Mouse ones, and relive some of your childhood. Um, the last thing I have on there is make a before bed routine. Now, this doesn't have to be complicated. It could literally be just something you do every single night before bed. It just has to be something very predictable that, you know, your brain knows, okay, as soon as I'm doing this, this is bedtime. So it could be, you know, you let the dog out and then you wash your face and you brush your teeth and then you go to bed. It could be something as simple as that, but just being very mindful while you're going through the process of doing that. So, you know, I'm letting the dog out 
and the next thing that happens is I'm brushing my teeth and I'm you know I'm getting ready for bed and just kind of reminding yourself as you go through the steps now breathing is interesting because there's a conscious aspect to breathing and there's the unconscious aspect to breathing so the unconscious aspect that's the one where you're just doing those really shallow breaths throughout the day these are the ones that kind of essentially just get you through the day they're they're just like the bare minimum essentially um, and then you have the conscious ability to control your breathing so that's you know the ability to pause and take a deep breath now just as a little test just ask yourself now at home who here whose breath has changed whose respiration rate has changed since we talked about breathing so that's kind of neat so this is just a reminder that you know most of us are going throughout our day just kind of breathing the bare minimum um, where we need oxygen to, to survive and even thrive so um, just taking those moments even if it's just 10 seconds to do two deep breaths you'll you'll feel better and immediately your heart rate will start to go down so I have nature on here um, now I'm gonna go on a small tangent here because um, way back when naturopathic medicine just started um, there they were called nature cure doctors um, and nature cure was essentially using earth water air um, it, basically the elements to help people feel better so they would go to these these retreats essentially in the forest and they would stay there and they would get um, you know water so hot and cold water treatments they would be outside so they would get sunlight um, they would eat a very hunter-gatherer type of diet and this is kind of what they did back in the day this isn't always convenient for everyone because we're on the go but um, you know take time to to go to the park to be outside to go on a hike um, any of these things and this is kind of like the modern day nature cure essentially now not to get not to let this presentation get too heavy but essentially spring is the perfect time to to do a check-in to see where you're at you know have you did you set a new year resolution and if you did have you fulfilled it um, you know make a list make something up that you know you want to complete set goals for yourself um, and I have even on here asking the hard questions you know am I happy uh, way back when I was in university so this is, story is going to be very vague because I don't even remember who did the TED talk or what the TED talk was even about but essentially it was this man who who would look at himself in the mirror every day and he'd say am I happy if he got a yes great he was awesome he went on his merry way throughout the day if he got a no three days in a row then he would essentially stop and say okay what will it take for me to change this no to a yes and then so you'd say okay is it something in my work is it something in my relationship is it something in my environment so these are just small check-ins that we can do that are very quick and and just to see where we're at so I have on here contrast showers now I made reference to water treatments when I was talking about the nature cure doctor so this is kind of the modern day nature cure kind of water treatment um, and people whenever I talk about this they're like man why would I want to do that that sounds horrible because essentially what it is is you use hot water as hot as you can stand for three minutes and then you use cold water for one minute and you repeat that cycle four times and end with cold now to ease your way into this I always say you know use cool water don't go right into the cold because then you're just gonna say this was the worst suggestion ever um, so but there's some good reasons for doing this I mean if you're if you shower in the morning it helps you wake up boost your immune system gets that blood flowing speeds healing so if you have any bruises or cuts this is this is ideal um, I have on here climate acclimation which is kind of a, a neat thing because for the people that don't like summer because they're sweating and they feel so hot or the person that is cold all the time these contrast showers actually help you 
um, acclimatized to temperature changes. So people that feel hot don't feel the heat as much, and people that feel cold all the time don't feel cold as much. So it, it's actually thermoregulatory and, and helps you kind of deal with, with changes in temperature. So it's kind of neat that way. So here I just have more of like kind of the explanation um, of what to do. So the three minutes of hot, one minute of cool, and again, four cycles ending on the cold. Um, so again, something to ease into, but definitely very beneficial. If the contrast showers are not your thing, there's also the sauna option. So this again is, um, you get the heat acclimation. This is more for athletes, let's say if you're training in a hot environment. Um, but you get the immune boost um, definitely from this as well. Um, there are some reasons why you wouldn't want to do the contrast showers or, or even the sauna. Now these are more serious conditions like heart conditions. Um, and I'm not talking about just like a, a murmur that you were born with type thing, but more like heart failure or recent heart attack, those type of things. The other thing is if you have any um, sensation changes or you can't feel the heat or cold, those would be reasons not to do these. Now for exercise for adults, most of us have heard of the 150 minutes a week. So this is essentially the minimum that, that you can do just to maintain your weight essentially over time. Um, if you want to see more like more benefit, then the more vigorous, vigorous the activity is, the less time you need to do it for. Um, so for blood pressure and cholesterol, 40 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic activity three to four times a week. Um, so this could be, depending on the person, it could be swimming, it could be elliptical, riding a bike, any of these type of things. Kids are pretty simple. Um, 60 minutes a day, that's the general rule. So if you have kids, uh, keep up with them and you will be well on your way to meeting your 150 minutes a week. Now you are what you eat. So this is, yeah, this is like one of those things that people say, but it's, it's so true. Um, and I mean, I, I've learned this working with athletes, just helping them get gains just solely based on diet, not even using protein powder or anything like that. Um, but a way to kind of illustrate this is how, um, you know, if you're familiar with the asparagus pea smell, uh, then you'll, you'll kind of appreciate this example. Um, so there you are eating your asparagus, um, goes down into your stomach, gets digested, goes into the intestines and your intestines are linked, um, to your circulatory. So all the blood vessels, it's very tight, tightly knit. So what happens is there's this little protein from asparagus that goes out into the bloodstream and says, Hey body, here I am. Does anyone need me? And the body's like, uh, no. What the heck is that? We should just get rid of you. Go down to the kidneys. So that's what happens. This little protein gets filtered out through the kidneys, and that's what gives you that asparagus pea smell. But, but And that's within, like, what, maybe an hour and a half, two hours of eating asparagus. So it's a very fast process, which means that essentially this little particle has gone around your entire body asking if anyone needs it, and the body said no and then it got eliminated. So this is literally how food works. It gets broken down to its smallest parts, goes around the body to where it's needed, and the rest is, is eliminated, essentially. So it's, you are what you eat is a, is a big deal. Um, so now we're gonna move on to kind of fermented foods here. So this is things that you can eat that will change the bacterial flora in your gut. So the cells in your intestines change over every four days, which is kind of exciting because, you know, you can make new cells very quickly. Um, and also you can change your gut flora by eating different things. Now, these all have probiotics in them, or prebiotics depending, and essentially what that will do is just change the little cultures that are found in your intestines. So it's not as potent as taking a probiotic because those are in the hundreds of billions of bacteria, the good bacteria. Um, but this is kind of like a slow, even keel kind of way to, to change your overall flora, which some people find beneficial. Then we've got healthy snacks. So 
people are always asking me, you know, what what can I take on the go because I'm so busy, I need something that can just be po like portable. Um, so here I have some examples. Um, and again, just be mindful of any allergies in, in case you have any, but um, these are just some quick things that you can take with you on, on your day. Now here I have the elimination diet, which which is hard. I'm not gonna lie. This is this is hard. This is you're gonna hate the first week of this, and you're gonna be like, Doctor K, this was the worst suggestion ever. Probably worse than the contrast showers. Um, but you can do a partial or a full. So the partial means you know you're taking out a few suspect foods. So some people will have you know they'll say, oh I don't I don't feel so great after I eat cheese or you know after I eat red meat or whatever the case so then they just take out those few suspect foods for a couple of weeks at a time but if you're doing the full elimination diet essentially you're taking out all the yummy foods there's no gluten no dairy no sugar no eggs no peanuts no nightshades no caffeine and no red meat so um, it you're asking what the heck can I eat essentially by the end of it um, the nightshades are peppers um, eggplant, um, those uh, tomatoes, um, potatoes are included in that as well. So those are those are all taken out. So you do that for three weeks. After the three week period is done with the full elimination diet, then what you do is you take the food at its most basic part. So a lot of people they they love their coffee, so that's what they want to introduce first. So they have coffee for breakfast and lunch. I wouldn't suggest dinner in case you can't sleep, but breakfast and lunch. And then for the next three days, you go back to the elimination diet and see how you feel. So if you have, but here's the thing, if you have a reaction, then you need to stop eating or drinking whatever it is right away. So these are some of the things to look out for. So just from food alone, you can get a headache, you can get a mood change, any digestive concerns, brain fog, so just feeling like you're, you're not at your top speed essentially on focus and getting things done. You could have a skin breakout or all of a sudden just you get hit with this kind of fatigue and feeling tired. So these are all things to watch out for when you're introducing foods, but if you're completely reaction free then you can successfully reintroduce that food back into your diet and you don't have to worry about it anymore. And then of course I am a little biased but I, I definitely recommend seeing a naturopath. Um, we're all about preventative medicine so even if you feel like you're healthy and your diet's on the right track it's, it's always helpful to have a second look at it and just see where improvements can be made. And um, acupuncture to release old emotions so this is you know, this is for the person that can't necessarily pinpoint um, what exactly is causing them, you know, sadness or or anger or, you know, whatever the case and just helping people kind of move through these things because essentially you want to leave things from the winter in the winter and you want to move into spring and have that healthy transition emotionally. And then again, looking at dietary counseling. So if, you know, you want to try the elimination diet, that now is a good time to start. Um, I also offer myself. I offer um, personal training, so essentially that includes a meal plan, um, a workout plan that you can take home, as well as four in-office sessions that we do together. So that um, the four in-office sessions are thirty dollars each, and if it's a new patient, then it's one hundred and thirty-five dollars for the initial visit, and it's just a great way to kind of kickstart everything for spring. So I hope you enjoyed learning about spring cleaning the body and even if you do a couple of these things and I mean a couple like you could just pick two things and do that and you will definitely start to feel better. Um, so enjoy and I will see you next time.